Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My frame for my Harbor Blue 69 High Boy restoration we're doing is back from sandblasting and painting, but uh, today all we're going to be talking about is the front axle here. We're going to be doing a full rebuild on this Dana 44 closed knuckle axle, so stick around and see how we do it. Hey guys, like I said, the frame and the small parts are all back from sandblasting and painting. But uh, like I said in the intro today, we're talking about this Dana 44 HD closed knuckle axle. So we're going to be tearing into this thing, seeing what all parts we need. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to rebuild and inspect everything about this axle. But for now, I thought we would uh, just take a look at the frame since I got it in here. It's a little dirty because it was sitting outside and uh, got rained on so it has water spots and stuff on it but uh, I thought this finish turned out really nice um, I'm not sure the exact uh, product that we that they used but uh, it's some kind of polyester epoxy uh, some kind of super hard it's uh, it does really good in abrasive uh, conditions they do a lot of like refinery type stuff and a lot of oil field type stuff and uh, they say this stuff is super duper tough and it's a satin finish so uh, they like it on uh, frames and stuff like this. It's going to be getting a lot of rock chips and stuff like that. I guess this this paint's like super hard. Uh, it had a satin finish, which I really liked. It's not a very bright finish. Um, the really super glossy frames I wasn't really a fan of. So I uh, tried to go with a little duller finish uh, on this. I didn't really want matte finish, but uh, this satin turned out really nice, I thought. Back here in the back of the frame, uh, there was some, some rust pitting. If you can see some of it there now they did use a high build primer on uh, on the frame here so it did fill some of the divots and stuff but uh, uh, I thought it turned out really nice um, you know you can still see some of the pitting from the uh, the rust uh, the flaky rust that was on the well not really flaky just little pit pits on the frame uh, I thought it turned out really nice so anyway guys just wanted to show you that frame and over here we have the uh, small parts Here's the uh, cross member that uh, we replaced in the last video on this frame. Transmission cross member, engine per perches, the blocks and the, the bottom plates for the axle and all that stuff. So all that stuff will be going on the frame at some point. But right now we're talking about this axle here. And uh, probably one of the most common things I get asked about is on these high boys is these closed knuckle front ends. And uh, whether you have an HD or a standard duty 44 uh, and... Uh, everything about them because uh, a lot of uh, these are kind of an oddball axle they're kind of an old school way of doing axles uh, with the closed knuckle ends uh, all of your modern axles and uh, a lot of the truck uh, axles that are in old Ford trucks are open knuckle uh, the high boys most of the high boys have closed knuckle except the uh, 76 and up they are open knuckle uh, with disc brakes and uh, the half tons I believe are all open knuckle so you know these are kind of a little bit old school and oddball but uh, when you're identifying your axle the uh, the uh, best way to identify what axle you have is you look at your lockout hubs um, these are sometimes called big hub axles they have big uh, uh, 3 8 bolts holding the lockout hub on the uh, light duty axle is about this big around and it's a smaller uh, lockout hub and it just says allen key bolts holding the uh, actual lockout hub on it doesn't have these big bolts and this is you know big like four and a half inch diameter hub the uh, standard duty hubs are a lot smaller so that's the easiest way to tell them apart uh, another way to tell them apart is uh, the the uh, ball the actual socket here on the closed knuckle it's a lot physically smaller about the size of a softball or something like that uh, where this one's a lot bigger kind of the size of like a bowling ball or something so uh those are two ways to tell them apart. The only real difference is the outer ends here. Uh, this axle has a weight rating of 3,500 pounds, where the uh, light duty axle has a weight rating of 3,300 pounds. So just a little bit lighter duty axle. The, uh, the center section is all the same. It's still a 44. The tube diameter is the same. It's all out there on the ends. So I'm not sure about bearing interchangeability. I'm guessing none of that's the same, uh, but I haven't ever cross-referenced the part numbers and stuff. But the uh, uh, best thing to do would be make sure what uh, axle you have and then get parts specifically for that axle that you know fit. Um, another way to tell them apart, another thing that's a little different about them is uh, 
the brake setup is different. The brake line setup on the light duty axle, the brake line goes directly to the uh, wheel cylinder. Where on the heavy duty ones, they have this bracket here on the kingpin top right here. And it has this uh, brake line going to the, uh, the wheel cylinder, this hard line. So they're just a little bit different that way. Um, I guess first thing I do whenever I get an axle like this, and I'm going to start working on it and trying to figure out what all I need to do is uh, when you still have the wheels and tires on it, and it's really actually better if it's still on the truck, uh, jack it up, get the weight off the tire, and then you grab the tire here and rock it back and forth, which I don't have the tire on here anymore. I have it off, but uh, I've already done this, um, and see if there's any play if you, you feel the wheel knocking back and forth. And there wasn't any on this axle, so I wouldn't be able to show it to you anyway. But uh, if you do have play, you need to figure out where that play is. Uh, most common where the play would be would be in your wheel bearings. So your wheel bearings are either wore out or loose. So it's allowing your hub to move up and down in relation to the knuckle because your wheel bearings are loose. So uh, uh, when, you, when you're rocking it back and forth, you look here on your, your drum and your backing plate for your brakes. And if your drum is moving back and forth and your backing plate is staying in, you know, in the same spot, that lets you know that the, uh, the play you have is in your wheel bearings. But it can also be in here in your knuckle bearings for the, uh, the closed knuckle right here. There's actually tapered bearings like wheel bearings in here. And uh, those can be bad. And then if you're picking it up and you're hearing a knocking back and forth and it's actually right here. And you can see it moving between this ball socket and the knuckle right here. That means your bearings in here are bad. So uh, if you're having problems with uh, loose wheels and stuff, that's a way to check back and forth on that stuff. And uh, before I tear down, I like to do that just so I know if something's bad or something's amiss. But uh, this axle, actually, uh, everything was tight. So uh, nothing inherently bad there. Another thing to visually inspect before you get uh, uh, everything blown apart is your knuckle seals which generally these are always bad um, see there's like a little gasket here that rides on this ball and it's missing like right here uh, pretty typical that these are bad and chewed up and uh, leaking oil and everything so uh, I already have a set of these coming because I know it needs that for sure uh, another thing I do kind of just general while I'm working on the axle is uh, I take the plug out of your uh, uh, differential here and look take a look at your oil on here and I've already done on this axle and this axle has really nice and clean oil so that's a good indication that everything in here is all right you don't have to rebuild the front end the bearings and everything in the differential so uh, uh, that's a good indication that especially on a front axle like this or it's not getting used a lot as long as that oil is fresh and clean in there I would call everything in there nice and good because uh, the front axle doesn't get used a lot so those bearings don't have a lot of wear on them but if you, if you take it out and it has water in it where it's like milky or it has metal shavings in it especially, then you need to look into rebuilding your center section, uh, new bearings, and probably ring gear and pinion while you're in there. So uh, this one looked good, so we're not going to be messing with that today. But uh, I am going to take the cover off and change the oil uh, and inspect it, do a visual inspection once I have it off. Make sure there's no teeth missing on the ring gear, uh, no ex uh, wear that you can visually see anywhere anything looks wrong. So I don't expect any of that to uh, have any problems. Uh, also, you can inspect your seals in here when you have your axles and everything out. There's seals in here in the, in the differential. Uh, make sure those aren't leaking. But since this thing was full of oil, I don't think they're leaking out. So uh, the, the pinion seal is leaking. As you can tell here, I will be replacing that one. So that pinion seal is leaking. It's pretty common for those things to go bad and leak. Uh, you can also tell your uh, uh, pinion bearing right here you pick up on your yoke and you feel the play up and down and uh, if it has play up and down your pinion bearings are bad but uh, this one's good nice and tight so I don't think we're gonna be digging into the differential here uh, I know there's a lot of people that probably want to know about setting up gears and replacing bearings and everything there uh, that is a pretty complicated subject um, there's lots of videos out there uh, that you can watch on how to set up gears and everything I'm not a uh, I've done several of them, but I'm not an expert by any means, so I don't feel comfortable teaching people how to do it. So uh, if you're if you're interested in that kind of stuff, uh, I would suggest you go find uh, some other videos on uh, experts on how to set up gears. 
right now we're basically going to be focusing on the outer ends of these axles and get them rebuilt and uh, ready to go on the frame so we're going to start digging into it and uh, once i find some stuff i can show you guys i'll jump back in and fill you guys in Well guys there, that uh, if you didn't notice, the uh, the drum was uh, fighting me a little bit. Uh, these things can be a little tricky, uh, especially when they've been sitting for as long as this thing has. I think this thing was sitting since uh, the late 80s, 88 or 89. So it's been sitting a long time. As you can see, everything in here is awful uh, cobwebby. And uh, there's even uh, mud daubers inside, the, inside here. So that drum was uh, stuck on there pretty hard. Uh, usually you can uh, this adjuster here you can get in there with a the screwdriver and loosen up that uh, slack adjuster and uh, get your your shoes sucked in and uh, there's a little lip right here on the edge of the drum and that's what there's getting hung up on because this drums pretty shot so uh, you can get those uh, shoes sucked in a little bit and then that thing will just slide on and off easy and uh, but this one it was seized up I couldn't get it loosened up and then the uh, the uh, retaining pin came out from this uh, shoe right there, so this shoe was just coming in and out with that rotor, and you couldn't get that thing unstuck. But uh, finally, just brute force, and I put some lubricant on there, and I got that thing out of there. So all of this is going to be replaced as far as brake-wise. So going to get new uh, drums, new shoes, new hardware, new wheel cylinders, new adjusters. All of that's going to be replaced. So all of this, we're just going to junk as we get it out of here, and we'll get all new stuff for that. But... Uh, the hubs here, I uh, wanted to show you, that's uh, another thing to inspect when you're working on these things, uh, is the lockout hubs. Now this one still has the original uh, cast, it still has the original cast aluminum lockout hubs, so it's probably different on, on what you have, because these, these a lot of times would uh, break and uh, got replaced a lot of times with like worn or aftermarket, mile marker, all those different aftermarket lockout hubs, so yours are probably different than mine. But it's a good time to inspect them and on this style right here you see those teeth right there that's what engages and uh, uh, locks your your axle shaft to your hub to drive the uh, wheels see this just spins freely this is your hub uh, and that lockout hub connects the axle shaft right here to the the hub here and these uh, teeth right here engage well that is a wear point for your lockout hub and these are actually in pretty darn good shape uh, you, you would look here for worn out, uh, stripped out, broken, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, here's the inner piece right here that goes over the uh, the axle shaft itself. And same thing with those. Those teeth, they show a little bit of wear, but not very much. So this one's all good shape. I'm going to run all that through the parts washer and get all that cleaned up. Uh, on the end here, to, to get that center piece out, there is a uh, spring clip right here on the end of the axle. There's a groove on the end of the axle shaft, the stub shaft. You gotta get that spring clip out and then that comes out of there. Another thing that you might saw me messing with was these little screws. They screw in right here on the hub and they are actually hold the drum in place. I know it seems silly as hard as that thing was to come off, but, but uh, that's actually to hold the drum in place like when you take your wheel off and stuff so your drum isn't loose and rattling around and getting out of place. And one of them was seized up. I had to hit it with a chisel in there uh, and get that thing started moving. So I'll get a new one of those before we all go back together. Since we're talking about that, I have this one still kind of assembled here. Here's those screws I was talking about that hold the drum on, those slotted screws. And then here's that uh, inner piece for the lockout hub that's still on the splined on the shaft. And right there is that, uh, that retaining ring or the snap ring there that holds it on. So that's how all, all that goes together. So right now, the next step would be uh, to take this hub off. And to do that, you have to take your uh, your nuts off, your wheel nuts. And this one's actually too loose. Look at that. 
I can just loosen it with my finger. That's not supposed to be like that. Uh, there's This is actually the locking ring. And there's another one behind it that uh, holds the bearing on. See if I can get this off of here. Well, we're talking and I'll just show you the other piece. I wonder if it's going to be finger loose too. And, uh, I mean, it's not uncommon for them to be loose. Uh, uh, actually, that should be tight on there. But as far as the, the inner piece, there's a ring. I'm probably not going to be able to do it with one hand. Yeah, not going to be able to do it. But there's a there's a ring in here with a bunch of uh, holes on it, sandwiched between these two lockout nuts. And there's a pin on the uh, inner piece that... Uh, locks into that ring and there's a there's a uh, groove in the spindle here that that ring locks into it, it basically all just keeps it from getting loose and that's the locking ring that locks it all together sandwiches it all together i'll show you all that once i get it apart so you can see the actual pieces and everything but the uh, next step is going to be taking that piece out and taking the uh, other lock ring out and getting the uh, the hub off and that's where your wheel bearings are held once we do that i'll strip down the brakes take the backing plate off and then we'll be moving on to the knuckle Okay guys, well I got the brakes all torn apart. As you can see, things are not very good. That wheel cylinder, every, the seals are bad and these pins are all crusty and you see how crusty it is in here. So all that stuff definitely needs to be replaced. Um, I thought I would point out this is a good time to inspect your spindles. These spindles can be a problem. You can buy new ones, but they're quite expensive. Um, if, if you had a bearing go bad over the years and uh, the race on the bearing spun right in here on these on these parts of the spindle it will wear this part down and uh, then your bearing fits loose in there so uh, uh, that can be a problem uh, we've had some spindles on our trucks that go bad and uh, the old school way of fixing that was you take a punch and you put divots all the way around this and kind of make that a little bit bigger so your your bearing can uh, can uh, grab onto that or not really grab it's not a, like a press fit but it's you want it to be tight where the bearing spins instead of the the inside of the bearing you know what i mean so uh uh these are well there just went that bearing i'm doing new ones anyway but uh this one's nice and tight as you could just tell uh so if, if it's loose in there and your bearing's got slop in it you need to look into replacing your spindles so uh there's also a seal right here a wheel seal that rides on this uh, it's a good time to inspect that for any damage where your your uh, your seal is not going to seal up. But everything looks good here. Uh, glad to see that because these spindles are quite expensive if you have to replace those. Uh, your wheel bearings in here. Uh, obviously, I'm just going to replace all of these. But uh, uh, good time to inspect those. Make sure you don't see any problems with those. Uh, the race, if you look, it's going to be hard to show you on camera. A way to tell if it's good or not. Let me get a light. That race in there, it actually, yeah, this one actually looks pretty bad. Uh, that race in there will be kind of matte finish. It won't be shiny. You want it to be real nice and shiny. If it's matte like this one is, that means that bearing was kind of working in there and uh, uh, on its way out, basically. Uh, since this one was tight, I don't think it was bad, but it was on its way to be bad because that finish on that race is all matted up. And dull you want it to be real nice and shiny so uh, that's another thing to check when you have all this apart so right now we're gonna be taking the spindle off which is these bolts right here we'll get this backing plate off uh, the brake we have to undo this brake line right here and it looks like it's gonna be all rusty and crusty so that's fun uh, so we're gonna be getting after that and uh, see if we can get this thing disassembled some more I'll probably go ahead and take the uh, tie rod off as well so we can get those things separated from one another and then we'll move off to get the knuckle apart.
Well, guys, as you can see here, I have the uh, all knuckle assembly and everything torn off of this axle. And you can kind of see this is just the uh, what's left when you get it all tore down. I uh, still have the uh, bearing cups in here. Maybe give you a little better idea if I can get it cleaned off. This one's been setting for a long time, so you can see where the bearings were setting in here. But uh, that, that cup there is rough and uh, not shiny at all. Uh, usually that would mean you need to replace it. Uh, if I remember right, one of these one of these was uh, you turn the knuckle and you could feel it uh, uh, being rough when you turn the knuckle back and forth. You know, So that definitely lets you know that the, uh, the bearings are rough in there and they need to be replaced. Uh, I need to get all this cleaned out because, um, you know, we're going to be putting that uh, new grease in here. And uh, that lubricates your bearing, your steer, your knuckle bearings as well as your U-joints. So uh, get all this clean so we don't have a debris in there. Uh, this is a good time if you have a problem with your uh, differential, your banjo seals in here leaking. There'll be a gear oil residue in here. And that gear oil can dilute your knuckle grease or knuckle lubricant. And uh, that can make it thinner. Uh, it can starve your bearings, your upper bearing for sure, and uh, it'll cause you to have leaks on here on your on your knuckle. So uh, definitely, if you if your banjo seals are leaking, you need to replace those. I don't believe these are leaking, uh, but uh, definitely going to get these cleaned out. And I got to punch those races out. And uh, I've already done that on the wheel bearings uh, off camera. But here's the old wheel bearings and the races or bearing cups. Uh, got those knocked out and uh, I've actually already ran the parts through the parts washer Here's the uh, hubs and right in here is where that uh, bearing cup would go So gonna hammer some new ones in there. Uh, get this all assembled. Here's the uh, the uh, knuckles here so uh, uh, Right there's where that knuckle bearing rides and uh, as well as our spindles here There's a better look at that uh, bronze uh, bushing thing that's in there that the axle rides on uh, and here's the uh, spindles all cleaned up uh, and actually over here I thought I would show you I should have grabbed it before I started filming but uh, it's the uh, spindle of one that we had that was uh, kind of ate up a little bit and I'll show you what I'm talking about on that here on this one you can see that uh, that bearing surface right there is all rough and uh, uh, chewed up. That's from that bearing working in that. Uh, uh, basically, what happens is your, your bearing gets uh, uh, worn out and then it just spins on the uh, spindle here instead of spinning in the bearing. And uh, that wears this out and the bearing is loose on the spindle here and then it causes you all kinds of problems. But uh, just wanted to show you that. And you can actually feel it right here. Where it was loose that's probably where the uh, weight was on it most when it was uh, in the truck back over here at our uh, axle we're rebuilding i have all my parts that came in right here these are the uh the uh, knuckle bearings for for right here here's one actually i can show you here's the bearing and uh, somebody actually put grease on this which is not the correct way to do it but uh uh, that's those bearings here part number for the bearing in the race uh, is right there. I think that's cross references with Timken as well uh, Have my uh, brake hardware kits. Uh, these are my seals for the uh, hub and here are my wheel bearings and uh, in here we have uh, my uh, Seals for the wiper seals for the closed knuckle aspect of it Those will go on last and uh, right here is a tube of the uh, axle lubricant that I'm going to use. Uh, this comes from Torque King. Uh, there's a little bit of it there. You can see a little bit of it leaked out. It's like a mixture between, it's not quite a grease, not quite an oil. It's a lot thicker than your standard gill oil, but it's a little bit liquid or more liquidy than, uh, say, grease. So it, it flows a little bit better. But uh, anyway, since I have all this thing blown apart already, and I'm basically all I have to do now is a bunch of cleaning and then uh, get ready for reassembly. I think we're going to hold off on this video and call it good. 
and uh, we'll do the reassembly on a second part of this video so I can kind of show you the assembly and process and all that, uh, how all that goes. So uh, be looking out for that whenever I assemble this axle. So we'll just call it good on this episode, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope I'm uh, helping some guys learn and how to put these high boys back on the road. If you like this episode, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.